Okay, so this is no time for indoors, and uh, I'm going to be showing you how to make a small, kind of narrow uh, crankbait out of a piece of wood like this. So what you're going to want to do is start with a little razor like this, uh, just a little razor knife. Um, so <clears throat> you're going to want to start uh, kind of towards the back, you're going to shave it down because you're going to want to make it uh, thicker up front and thinner in the back. So pretty much with the razor knife right now you're just shaping out the body. So as you can see I've sort of carved down the back end a little bit. I still need to do the front but uh, sort of got a little bit of a shape going here. It took me probably three minutes to do all that. Um, just make sure you're not making your cuts too deep especially if you're using a softer wood or else it'll break off big flakes of it. Um, I almost did that a couple times. Uh, this is what I have now. Um, sort of your general shape front, back other side same sort of deal um, I know it really looks like crap right now but uh, all you want to do with the razor knife is get your uh, basic shape out of it because if you try and do too much you're gonna end up messing up um, this is where sandpaper comes in you're gonna want to start with this really rough stuff obviously um, not sure what grit this is it says 40 on the back but I don't know if it's that low um, it could be though it's really rough um, so basically just use the rough stuff until you get out all the big um, I don't know if you can see here I got a big gouge in there where I went too deep with the razor and uh, pretty much the stuff like that is what you're gonna wanna work out with this sandpaper so um, just take it along the body do what you can with it So you can see here, um, there's a little spot there, it's a little gouge that I made with the razor. Um, that's really why you don't want to go too deep with the razors because those things are a pain to get out. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much just trying my best with the sandpaper I have, just kind of take a light strokes over it. Um, I mean, it's coming out, it's just taking a long time, so... So I'd show you that's why you don't want to go too deep with your razor. Okay, so I pretty much have most of the body done. You can see there's a couple rough spots there, but I can get that out with some uh, smoother sandpaper. Um, yeah, I got that one little rough bit out. Uh, let's see, I don't even remember where it was. Somewhere in here, one of the sides. But anyways, um, now I'm going to move from this real rough sandpaper to something a little softer. So I got it kind of shaped out a bit um, with the lighter sandpaper. Yeah, now I'm just going to go back keep doing some more sanding with this stuff. I'm pretty much almost done with this. I'm about to go to some uh, even smoother stuff here in a minute, but I'm just going to finish up. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using next. Um, this stuff is a bit smoother um, than this stuff. I'm sure you can probably tell this is getting really smooth. Um, there's still some little impurities in here, but uh, I'll just have to work those out. Um, I think it's looking pretty nice. Anyways, what you're going to use next is one of these guys. Okay, so i got a little bit more of the imperfections out. Um, see that one little spot? got it out a little bit here. Um, you can see it right there. But, you know, I kind of made it a little bit better. Anyways, what you're going to do next is this. It's another one, the fingernail files, except this one is a lot smoother. Um, yeah, it's as you can tell, it's been used quite a bit, though. I've made pretty much all of my lures using this. So, <clears throat> anyways, just take it, go to town with it. Uh, this is really going to make your lure nice and smooth, make it look pretty. Okay, so got a little bit more taken out. Um, if if you really don't care how your lure looks that much, uh, 
more for function than fashion. Um, you don't really have to use all this sandpaper. You can pretty much just use the rough stuff, get your basic design made out, and uh, just leave it at that. <clears throat> but uh, I just, I, I say if I'm going to take the time to make it, I might as well make it look good. So I, I guess I just like having a good looking lure, so I go through all the trouble with extra sandpaper. But anyways, this is the last step. This stuff is really, really fine. That's the last of the sanding that we're going to do. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with the body of it. So now what we're going to do is uh, drill holes for the hardware. Um, what I'm going to add on is one of these guys. Obviously you need holes for your hooks. Uh, I'm probably just going to make this one with two hooks in it, one here, one in the back. So, oh, also, this is a good time to let you know, um, if you want, I mean, it's always an option. You can add, you know, a little propeller to the back of it or something. Um, you know, you could drill little holes in the sides and add a little rattle like this into it. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little basic lure. Okay, so my drill is charged enough now um, that I can do this. Uh, for the video, I'm going to do it in my hand, but normally I would use a vise, but you, the camera is in my vise right now uh, on my little homemade stand. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this in my hand. I would not recommend it, though, for a few reasons. I mean, you could slip off and drill through your hand. Uh, you could mess up your lure really easy. Okay, so there we go. Um, a little piece of letter in there. It, it's not that much weight, but it's definitely enough to keep it um, floating this way, especially once I have the weight of the hooks and the bill on there. It'll definitely float right. Okay, so I just put the two eye screws in, um, one on the bottom here, one in the back. So now all I have to do is drill my holes right here for the bill. Make sure you don't go too tight or else you uh, you risk splitting your wood and also um, if, if you go too tight it could actually weaken the hold that your screw has into the wood. So just, just kind of get it finger tight, just get it snug. There it is with counterweight hole, two eye screws, and the bill on. Okay, so I have it just sort of spread along on there. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty because, again, you're going to sand it down, get it nice and smooth with the body of the lure. So, yeah, we're going to let that dry for 24 hours, and then we'll go ahead and paint it. Okay, so it's dried for 24 hours, and so it's, uh, it's good to sand now. So let's get our sandpaper. Okay, so we're going to use this deal again, the little fingernail file. And uh, so you're just going to go over and do sort of a rough job. You don't have to get it perfect because we're going to go over with some softer sandpaper. Okay, so you can see it's quite a bit smoother. Uh, now we're just going to get some smoother sandpaper. Uh, let's see what I got here. Go ahead and use this stuff here. Okay, so you can see it's a bit smoother. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is dry fit your hardware, your hooks and your bill. That's what I've done here. Um, now that I look at it with it all attached, I think I should have had the hook a little bit farther back here. Um, just would have looked a little better. But, you know, it is what it is. So, next step is just to paint it. Okay, so this is the finished product. I finished painting it. Um, I used my airbrush. It was the first time, so it's not the greatest paint job ever, but I'm satisfied with it. And I dipped it in a layer of varnish. You can see it's got a real nice shiny coat on the top of it. And that also keeps the paint from bleeding off of it while it's in the water. And I assembled the hardware. I put on a dress treble hook on the back of it and a metal bill on the front. And that's how you make a crankbait out of a piece of scrap wood.